Hey folks, just imagine this, this guy is really successful, but he starts attracting gold diggers, and his life turns into a nightmare, because that's the plot of the 2009 movie Obsessed, and I'm the broken turn, so let's recap. A happy family just bought a big house, and we see the husband walking around the house realizing it's their dream home. So, it seemed like it couldn't get better. But when they get to the master suite, there are mirrors on the ceiling. They decide to let the young one sleep in the living room while they redo the bedroom. Derek is a highly successful guy, and while Sharon stays home to oversee the move, he's off to work in his yellow Camaro. But this day would change everything because he's in the elevator, and when everyone gets out on their floor, it keeps going. There's a blonde lady who also stays on because she's the new temporary secretary filling in for a sick employee. They strike up a conversation, and before he goes in, he warns her to be careful with the boss because he's handsome but demanding, but she doesn't realize he's Derek Charles. He enters the office, and everyone seems to like him. Lisa appears, notices he's Derek himself, and she's impressed. However, his personal assistant, Patrick, mentions he's married. Lisa feels even more challenged, looking at him with a mischievous intent. Derek heads into a meeting with the president and secures a millionaire client for the company. It's going to be their year, and to celebrate, his friend Jerry gets them Lakers game tickets. Derek declines, citing family and wanting to inaugurate the new house. Before leaving, he says hi to Lisa, considering she's just a temporary replacement and won't be around long. Little does he know, she starts researching his life. Back home, he puts his son to bed and spends some intimate time with Sharon. The evening promises more fun. The next day, Patrick is absent, and Lisa informs Derek she's subbing in because he has a cold. The problem is, she's now even closer. He invites her for some instructions, and she takes notes quickly, proving to be highly competent. Later, Derek calls Sharon to check on things, and she's on a second line, listening in but disguising it. Something might be brewing. When she gets home, Sharon reveals she wants to go back to college. Before they got married, she used to be his personal assistant at the company. She makes it clear she doesn't want any female secretaries around, or he'd have issues, essentially saying she's fine but others aren't. And just when you think it can't get worse, the next day, she decides to visit the company with their child to meet everyone. The moment Lisa appears, Sharon realizes she's no ordinary person. Lisa starts talking about how good-looking the child is, just like his father. Sharon gets angry, thinking Lisa should be fired ASAP. Later, when they go to show the child to the employees, Lisa takes the opportunity to snoop around his desk, trying to find out more about his interests. We know that a woman has a thousand and one ways to mess up a man's life, because the next day there would be the company's Christmas party, and there was always a lot of drinking. When he arrives, Lisa is still there because another employee fell ill this time. She starts talking to Patrick because he enjoys gossiping. During lunchtime, everyone goes downstairs, but Lisa is still there eating alone, crying. Derek asks her why she's like this, and she explains that her boyfriend cheated on her with her best friend. He tells her that cheating is just something people put in each other's heads, trying to cheer her up. At the same moment, Jerry appears and warns Derek to be careful because women like her are after rich and successful men. However, Derek wants to pretend he doesn't know anything. Back in the office, Lisa left a CD of his favorite band on his desk, trying to create a connection. The night would be the big party, and he gets ready. Sharon tells him not to drink too much because their child was conceived after the last party. Before reaching the party, he stops at a restaurant to have a burger, and coincidentally, Lisa passes by. It's all fate, and they start talking. Later, they head to the party. But that's when everything starts going wrong. People start drinking and dancing, but Derek has no ill intentions. When he goes to the bathroom to leave, she follows him and tries everything to get closer to him. To make matters worse, another employee enters, and they have to be quiet because explaining the situation would be quite awkward. Afterward, he leaves angrily, but Patrick notices that something happened. When it's time for Patrick to be a gossip, he decides to stay silent. Derek arrives home feeling nervous and guilty. The next day, he doesn't want to see her even if she were painted gold and pretends like nothing happened because everyone was drunk. At the end of the day, he's the last to leave and thinks everything will be fine. But when he gets into his car, Lisa gets in too. She's been wearing a coat all day, 
and underneath, she's wearing a special outfit. She starts saying that he wanted to do those things, but when he rejects her, she curses at him, calling him a coward for treating her like this. When he gets home, he wants to tell everything to Sharon, but she's on the phone with her sister, who just found out that her husband was cheating with his secretary. They have three kids, so he decides to stay quiet not to worsen her day. Facepalm. He decides to tell Jerry everything, and Jerry suggests reporting it to HR because Derek has a history of being a ladies' man and even married his last personal secretary. This could bring a scandal to the company. But when he goes to HR, the guy tells him that Lisa resigned due to poor performance. He starts feeling relieved, thinking his life is getting back on track, and continues living as if he owes nothing to anyone. However, on New Year's Eve, he receives an email with several photos of Lisa, saying that now they could be together. He quickly deletes everything before Sharon sees, and I don't understand how a wealthy and successful man can be so foolish. The logical thing to do would be to confess. The following week, there's a business trip planned, and there's usually a lot of drinking involved since they'll be meeting clients. Sharon tells him to let her know if anything happens. At the hotel, everyone is drinking, and the waiter brings a drink from a woman. Derek doesn't understand, and suddenly, Lisa appears, saying they can now have their moment because she's no longer with the company. He tells her he doesn't want anything to do with her, but she puts something in his drink. Things start going downhill from there. He becomes dizzy, and Jerry thinks it's because Derek can't handle alcohol. In his hotel room, he sees a woman approaching, but he can't react. I think you get the picture of what happens next. The next morning, he wakes up hungover, unsure if it was a nightmare, and he's late for a business meeting. Derek can't concentrate during the meeting because so much is going on. They inform him that his wife is outside, so something might have happened. But when he goes out, it's Lisa. He threatens to make a scene and expose her lies, but she threatens to reveal everything they did, which would be worse for him. She starts crying claiming they had a beautiful love story even though nothing happened between them. He tells her to never appear in front of him again, and from that point on, he avoids alcohol to ensure nothing happens. Little did he know that life was taking its toll, and payback would be humiliation. When he returns to his room, he finds Lisa unconscious on his bed. He calls for emergency help, but explaining the situation is quite a challenge. Sharon shows up at the hospital, and at the same time, Detective Monica wants to take his statement. And if you don't want to fall for the same trap he did, leave a like and subscribe, because in this life, we're only certain of two things, death and humiliation. So, let's keep going. Derek tells what happened, or rather what didn't happen, but Sharon doesn't want to believe him, especially considering his history. Even the detective isn't entirely convinced and suggests that telling the truth would be better. Lisa wakes up and provides Derek's name and phone number, showing that she had information about him. However, she had obtained that information while working in the office. When they get home, Sharon is furious and doesn't want to hear anything. She tells him to leave her house, which does seem unreasonable. The next day, Monica talks to Lisa, who claims to be feeling better. She mentions that Derek sent her flowers with a card saying they would be together forever. Monica starts sensing something is off. The situation starts affecting all aspects of Derek's life. The company could lose many clients if this becomes public. Now he has to stay in a hotel until things are resolved, visiting his son every week. One day, Derek activates his best skill, his charm, and invites Lisa to dinner for his birthday. She accepts, as she enjoys the thrill. She gets all dressed up, and at the restaurant, she tells him she has a gift for him, but he'll only get it at the end of the night if he deserves it. Meanwhile, the babysitter is at home taking care of their son. Lisa shows up at their house, claiming to be a friend of Sharon's and that she came to bring a gift for the kid. She pretends to call Sharon to confirm her story, and it becomes evident that it's better to let the child play outside until late than to have such a babysitter. When they return home, they realize their son is missing. They find him sitting in the car, and they rush him to the hospital to make sure he's okay. The detective had informed them that Lisa left town. With anger, they decide to do whatever it takes to protect their family. They install various security systems at home, and Sharon is determined to put an end to this situation. Given the choice between Lisa and Sharon, many would side with Sharon. 
Lisa is manipulative and malicious. Days go by, and they can't find peace until she's caught. The following week, it's Sharon's parents' wedding anniversary. Sharon would go ahead, and Derek would join after work. However, Lisa calls Patrick and asks him to spill the gossip. Here, we see that the real villain of the movie is Patrick, because he spills everything and realizes he made a mistake. Lisa waits for Sharon to leave the house, then sneaks in to prepare the drugged soda and peanuts for Derek's arrival. What she didn't anticipate was Sharon coming back, because she forgot to activate the alarm. And here begins the climax of the movie. Sharon is filled with determination, and Derek calls to check if everything is okay. Sharon cryptically tells him she's dealing with a problem, so he senses that something is wrong and rushes back home. The two women engage in a frantic fight, but Sharon manages to push her off the balcony, and a chandelier falls on her. By the time others arrive, Sharon has put an end to the ordeal. Detective Monica understands what happened, and now everyone is sure that Derek wasn't lying, Lisa was indeed unstable. And that concludes the movie Obsessed. To avoid attracting any bad luck into your lives, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Take care, and I'm signing off. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me and I